There's priests here among us. <laughs> we have visiting with us today Father John Fincher from the Diocese of Tulsa and Father Ryan Rojo from the Diocese of San Angelo, Texas. Uh, they're here along with uh, about 30 missionaries from Oklahoma and from San Angelo uh, who are preparing this week for uh, their mission this summer as totus tuus missionaries going uh, throughout our state and the Diocese of San Angelo uh, sharing the gospel and, and the faith with our young people. As, as I'm sure you know, uh, or perhaps not, I am uh, one of the chaplains for totus tuus of Oklahoma. Uh, and Father John and Father Ryan are also chaplains for, uh, for Totus Tuus. And so we welcome them. Uh, Father Rojo, Father Ryan Rojo, was a classmate of mine in seminary. Uh, so please don't ask him for any stories. I want to kind of keep those over there. This feast that we celebrate today, uh, this mystery, of God in himself as the Holy Trinity is a very important feast. And in fact, it is among perhaps one of our most important feasts because it is our most important mystery. If you'll allow me to read a little bit from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which as you know is a uh, kind of a reference text that contains a summary of everything that we believe as Catholics. In the section on the Holy Trinity, the Catechism says this, the mystery of the Holy Trinity is the central mystery of the Christian faith and life. It is the mystery of God in himself. It is therefore the source of all the other mysteries of the faith, the light that enlightens them. It is the most fundamental and essential teaching in the hierarchy of the truths of faith. The whole history of salvation is identical with the history of the way and means by which the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit reveals himself to men and reconciles and unites with himself those who turn away from sin. In other words, Everything that we believe, everything that we understand, everything that we are called to live flows out of this mystery that we celebrate today. Because everything flows out of the Lord. Everything flows out of God. And today we celebrate the mystery of God in himself. This mystery of the Trinity is along with being our most important, perhaps even our most beautiful, and the one that can bring us to uh, great gratitude and great joy. Because the mystery of the Trinity in itself tells us, and we know, God to be one God in three persons. God in himself is a relationship of love. God in himself is a mutually outpouring of love between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and everything else flows from that relationship of love. But perhaps for me, one of the things that uh, kind of strikes me the most about this mystery is that because God in himself is a relationship of love, he has everything he needs within himself. And therefore, everything else is purely coming from a place of love from him. I think one of the ways that our society kind of portrays God and our relationship with God is that we are seen as uh, people who, uh, in, in some sense, feed God by our prayers. And God needs us to turn to him and to love him and to make acts of devotion to him uh, 
so that he can continue to exist and he can continue to thrive. But that's not at all what we believe. Right? That's not at all our understanding of God and our understanding of the Trinity. In fact, if you'll permit me to read one more thing from the Catechism. This is Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph one. This is the very first thing in the Catechism, the very first thing. God, infinitely perfect and blessed in himself, in a plan of sheer goodness, freely created man to make him share in his own blessed life. For this reason, at every time and in every place, God draws close to man. He calls man to seek him, to know him, to love him with all his strength. He calls together all men, scattered and divided by sin, into the unity of his family, the church. To accomplish this, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son as Redeemer and Savior. In his Son and through him, he invites men to become, in the Holy Spirit, his adopted children, and thus heirs of his blessed life. What a beautiful summary of what God does for us. What a beautiful summary of our faith, that God is infinitely perfect and blessed in himself. In other words, he does not need us. If we did not exist, nothing would be taken away from God because in himself he is infinitely perfect and blessed. But out of pure love and a plan of sheer goodness, God freely created you and me. God freely created us. Not so that anything could be added to him, but so that he could share his blessed life with us. He created us purely for our good, purely so that we could exist and in existing be good, and that he could draw us to share in his own divine life. What a blessing. What a beautiful thing that God would do for us purely out of love and out of his own goodness. And this is what we celebrate today. In our responsorial psalm, we prayed, Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. That's us. We are blessed because we have been chosen by God to be his own. And he pours out himself in love for us constantly. He always, and in every place, as we read in the Catechism, draws close to us so that he can draw us into his life. When we were divided from him by sin and when we're divided from each other by sin, he sent his son as our savior and redeemer. And Jesus gives himself fully for us on the cross and in this mystery of the Eucharist so that we can find in him redemption, so that we can be drawn back into that divine life that he desires for every single one of us. So as we celebrate this great solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, let us give the Lord thanks that he would look upon us with such great love. And let us ask him for the grace to constantly turn back to him so that more and more in our lives we can share, even now, in his own blessed life. And coming to the end of our life, we can rejoice forever with him and in him and through him as we enjoy the great peace and love and joy of the heavenly kingdom for all eternity.